Hey folks, Tim here from Rockout Videography again, and this is going to be episode three in my series on home recording studio design. Today we're going to talk about studio monitor pads, the theory behind why you might need them, how I made my own, and why at the end of the day this might all just be nothing more than a gigantic waste of time. So, here's the theory. The speaker in your monitor makes sound by vibration. We all know this. However, since it's connected to the speaker enclosure, the enclosure is vibrating and it makes sound as well. We assume that the manufacturer took this into account when they designed the monitor and it's all part of the master plan. However, as soon as you place a monitor on a surface such as a desk or a speaker stand, it causes that surface to vibrate and create sound. This is not part of the manufacturer's plan and so we assume that the sound we are hearing has now been distorted. At least, that's the theory. Traditionally, there are basically two ways to deal with this issue. One way is to use a speaker stand that has so much mass that the monitor cannot make it vibrate. You'll see commercially available and DIY speaker stands filled with sand that are designed to solve the problem in this way. Another option is to place some kind of pad made out of rubber or some other kind of soft material to absorb the vibrations from the monitor and prevent them from vibrating the surface it's sitting on. You can find monitor pads on Amazon for really low prices, but I decided to make my own. Why? Well, making stuff is fun. Besides, I thought that by using layers of different materials, I could make pads that would work better than anything I could buy. I started out by going to Walmart and buying some craft foam. I also picked up some rubber cement and a cushioned kitchen mat. I already had some one half inch foam floor tiles laying around the house. I measured out and marked my lines on the floor tiles using a carpenter square, a framing square, and a black sharpie marker. Then I cut out the pieces using a soldering iron with a razor knife tip. If you're going to cut foam floor tiles, this is the best way to get clean cuts. I used a razor knife to cut out the pieces of the kitchen mat and an X-Acto knife to cut the craft foam. Then I used the rubber cement to glue all the pieces together in layers. I put the monitors on top of the pads to hold them together while the rubber cement dried. The idea is by using multiple layers of different materials, I'm avoiding sympathetic resonance. So, here's why this all might just be a waste of time. Because you're watching a video about home recording studio design, you probably know who Ethan Weiner is. If not, let me introduce him to you. Ethan Weiner is one of the owners of Real Traps, a company that makes acoustic treatment. He also posts on audio forums and is really great about sharing knowledge and supporting people who want to build their own DIY acoustic treatment. Ethan did some sound tests with several types of studio monitor pads against each other and comparing that to no monitor pads. His conclusion was that they don't really make any noticeable difference, at least not any difference that you can actually hear. You can read the article yourself by googling Ethan Weiner monitor pads. It's the first thing that shows up on the search. Hey folks, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it. Do me a favor, leave a comment and let me know what you think about studio monitor pads. Do you think they're a waste of time? Do you use them in your studio? I'd appreciate knowing what you think about this subject. As always, you can like and subscribe. You can also check me out on Facebook. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.